starting the meeting of the Penichuk Water Special Committee. Uh, for those, I don't have this script here with me, I'm sorry. Um, but those that uh, can join by uh, Zoom, the uh, link agenda, can, pardon? It can be found on the agenda. It can be found on the agenda. And the city website. And the city, city website. Thank you, um, Alderman Dowd. Um, would the um, sitting in clerk please call the roll? <laughs> okay. Alderman Patricia Clee. Here. Alderman Michael B. O'Brien. Present. Alderman Dowd is here. Alderman Lopez. He is not here. Okay. And Alderman Large, Melbourne Moran. Also not here. Okay. We also in attendance is Larry Goodhue, CEO of Penichuk. Uh, Thomas J. Leonard, Director of Penichuk Corporation. And who else is on, John? No, John we have no. um, Mr. Lustig. Jay Lustig. Chris Conti Chris and Conte. George Torres. George Torres, yeah. Okay. Um, and we have three of five, so we have um, quorum. Normally here we would be electing uh, the clerk, but seeing there's three of us. No, we can delay that for later. I would like to make the motion to delay that when we have a full board present, that we could do right. that, please. So, so we'll table it at this We'll time. table it until then. And yep. can we get a voice vote on that? Mm -hmm. Table. All, All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we'll table that. Um, Public comment, I don't see anybody here, and I don't see anybody online. Nope. So we'll just move on. Uh, communications? Uh, the communications from Larry D. Goodyear, Chief Executive Officer of Penetruck, relative to the Penetruck Corporation quarterly report, the sole shareholder for the quarter ended September 30th, 2021. If there be no, no if there's no objection, you thank you. I'm sorry, I have no wave script the reading here. <laughs> wave the reading wave the and reading. put it on, place it on, place file. It on file. Thank you. Also, uh, from Larry D. Goodyear, Chief Executive Officer Penichuk, Penichuk East Utility Inc. requests for approval of loan of term loan with CoBank ACB. If there be no objection, we'll wave the reading and place on file. And a communication from Larry D. Goodyear, Chief Executive Officer Penichuk. Penetrack East Utility Inc. requests for approval of loan and grant from the Drinking Water and Groundwater Trust Fund. If there be no objection, we'll waive and waive the reading and place on file. Unfinished business. None. Uh, new business resolutions. R twenty two zero one eight authorizing the Penetrack Corporation and Penetrack East Utility Inc. to borrow funds and accept the grant. From the state of New Hampshire Drinking Water and Groundwater Trust Fund, uh, I make a motion to recommend final passage to the full board. Uh, Mr. Goodhue, did you want? To, yes, please. Yeah. Would both of you join us? Anywhere you want. I know Anywhere. it's kind of crowded here, so. <laughs> These nice new desks. I know. Put <laughs> so. the green lights on. The sound is working. Yes. Great. Just make Thank sure you. the microphones are close to you. They're yeah. very directional. Can you hear me okay? I think yeah. so. They yell at us if they don't. All right. Very good. Um, so would you like me to address that first Yes, item? please. If you address the first item. the. Uh, so we have a project that we're working on within Penetrack East Utility down in Wyndham, New Hampshire. We have a community water system there called the W&E system. And we basically have some... Um, capacity uh, issues relative to the overall availability of water from the wells we have there, as well as the constituency of certain things that we have to treat out of the water. Um, and so it's been a little bit of a problem uh, relative to giving ample supply for all of the needs in that system. With the Southern New Hampshire Regional Water uh, Project, the 40 some million dollar project where water's coming down from Manchester through Derry, through Wyndham, to Salem, Plastow, Atkinson, um, there's actually, there was actually the ability for us to interconnect onto that as a, uh, a new interconnected source of supply. And so um, uh, we petitioned the Drinking Water and Groundwater Trust Fund for funds available to complete that project. And they actually approved us uh, for a financing and grant approval. So this is a two-part approval of which, um, and I'm gonna read it because I'm gonna get the numbers wrong. <laughs> the memory's good, but it's not great. It's uh, 
493,500 as far as a 25 year loan and $211,500 as a grant, uh, which is wonderful. Um, so, you know, we love uh, to get grant money because that absolutely comes through with a nice uh, price tag to it. Uh, so this is the necessary funding to complete that project, which will be completed this year. Uh, again, uh, this was offered and approved by the Drinking Water and Groundwater Trust Fund, has been approved by our board of directors, um, has now been offered to you for approval, and a docket and petition filing has already been submitted to the Public Utilities Commission for approval by them. Okay. Okay, so. Are there any questions? Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, my only question is, uh, some of these suppliers, uh, will that be like coming from wells themselves? And if they are coming from wells, uh, do you have a procedure to protect the potability of the water that may be coming in? Uh, could you just go over that, the safety procedures that uh, we're going to, you know, make sure that they get a fine product? We currently have multiple wells on that pro on that property, of which the capacity and uh, constituency of the water is insufficient to meet all of the needs. This interconnection is actually connecting onto the water main that is coming down directly from Manchester Waterworks through Derry, through Wyndham, and over to this area. So one of the things that we actually have to do, though, however, Manchester Waterworks treats their water for disinfection with chloramines whereas we treat our water with chlorine. So part of this project is not only the interconnection, but the treatment system that is needed to convert from that one disinfection methodology to the other in order to make sure that we have uh, the, the right water. Very good, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the only question I have, and I always ask this for everybody that gets grants, this is a straight up $211,500 grant. Um, Obviously, we're getting the loan as well, but you don't have to come up with any additional monies like matching fund type grants. No, it's just no a matching straight funds. On grant. The only thing I can tell you is that, you know, as we go out to bid and the project happens, this is providing like $711,000 right. of the money or $707,000. Uh, if the project costs $715,000 or $720,000, we'll have to use that little residual from our fixed asset line of credit, uh, which is part of our annual facility to fund right. projects during the year that we annually term loan, which we'll be talking about in a minute. So to the extent that there might be some overage, we would have to do that. To the extent that it's under that, we will take the full grant money and we may not fully draw down the loan money. Okay. Okay, so right. that's that's how that works. So the, the grant money will be your buffer. <coughs> yep. The grant money is if we don't if you don't need that. We're gonna take 100% of that grant money. Oh yeah. Uh, right up front, and that's and we'll wonderful. toggle on the loan money is what we'll do. Good. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, if there are no questions, uh, Mr. Clerk. Voice vote. We can just. Oh, that's right. We can do a voice vote on <laughs> this one. So we have nobody. Else. Nobody online. Nobody online. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It passes. A voice yep. vote. Um, Mr. Clerk? Yes, the next item is R22019, authorizing Penetrack Corporation and Penetrack East Utilities, Inc. to end to enter with term loan with CoBank ACB. I'd like to make a motion to recommend final passage to the full board. All right, thank you. And Mr. Goodhue, I know you slightly mentioned this in your previous. Sure, yeah. sure. You know, one of the things that we've done since the acquisition by the city in 2012 is we had to find a way that we could properly fund all of our capital projects with debt solely. That was one of the intentions in the acquisition by the, by the, the, the city of Penichuk Corporation, the parent company. And so we had to find a way to fund those product projects, not only during their construction phase, but then in their repayment phase for the entire life of those assets. And so we have what is called a fixed asset line of credit at both our Penetrack Waterworks subsidiary and our Penetrack East Utility subsidiary. And those facilities are used to fund projects during each calendar year, either in a purchase or construction basis. And then each year, we have to then return that, pay down or pay off that fixed asset line of credit and convert that short-term borrowing into a long-term borrowing. Much like a homeowner would do if they had a home equity line of credit and they were rebuilding their home and then at some point in time they're done with the project and the rebuild or the refit and they go out and they remortgage their home so they convert it from a short term facility to a long. And so this is our annual borrowing for projects that were completed, used and useful and placed in service during the calendar year 2021 for Penichuck East Utility for which we have already have a docket open with the PUC to get the surcharge associated with the debt service on this 
and the incremental property taxes. And this is the loan that we do once a year to now reimburse financing, convert that short-term borrowing to a long-term note for the life of the assets that have been funded. Okay. And I know you mentioned your, the previous loan that we were getting a very good rate on that. This as well? Yes, this, this loan is probably going to be in the 4.5% range right now. Uh, the rate floats until the day we close. Uh, it has traditionally been tied to the 30-day LIBOR rate, but LIBOR is going away. I don't know if everybody knows what LIBOR is, yeah. the London, London Interbank Offering Rate, and it's, an, it's a market index rate that they tie most borrowings to when they lock down for long-term loans. The LIBOR rate is going away, I think it's the end of next year. It's no longer going to be available as an index. And so CoBank has already told us they're going to replace it with the SOFR rate. And I can't remember exactly what that acronym stands for, S-O-F-R, but the rate is synonymous or very, very much identical to the to LIBOR rate. Uh, based on current rates and the margin on that, we feel that this loan is probably going to close at about 4.5%. Um, is that equal to or close to what you've it's done in the past? It's very close. Our, yeah. our CoBank borrowings, we have a number of loans with CoBank going all the way back to 2008. And they've all been in the four to four and a half percent range. We have actually have one that's at five point nine five percent way back from two thousand eight. So it's been in that spectrum, I guess you could say four to six percent. We always go for state revolving fund loans first, or drinking water and groundwater tr trust fund loans first. But those are only for eligible projects. Okay. They're not more broad brush. Why do we do that? Uh, the drinking water and groundwater trust fund loan is like two point seven percent. SRF loans 2.7. We'll take those all day long. Um, but, you know, we have to get the money to fund our projects. So CoBank is our lender of choice. And they're really the only one that really is there for Penetrek East Utility to basically fund those long-term projects. Thank you. CoBank is a, just a commercial bank. It's yeah. a traditional commercial, well, not a traditional commercial bank, but it's, it's in other words, it's market. It's the, the, um, you need to um, say who yeah, you are. I'm the, sorry. Your microphone and microphone, yeah. All right. <laughs> just, just for the people who are, yeah. it out. And, 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 uh, All right. announce who you are, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, yeah. So my name is Jay Leonard. I'm chairman of the board. And, and uh, just in case it's not clear, CoBank is a, um, it's just a bank in the market. It's okay. not, it, whereas the SRF and the right. trust fund are, to some extent, subsidized because they're governmental agencies okay. intended to fund uh, water or infrastructure. Right. So, so, that's, so why that's why the rates are going to be different. They're, they're, they're different. And, and just to maybe give you even a little bit more color, CoBank is the, loan, the lender for Penichuk East because of its, of its demographics. They are actually a part of the Farm Credit Bureau as a government-sponsored entity, commercial bank, that can loan to, to farms and utilities throughout the country as long as they meet the demographics. And our Penichuk East utility company does meet the demographics as an eligible a debtor uh, for them to serve as a creditor. Thank you. Any questions? No. Nope. Seeing none, um, those in favor of the passage of R22-019, say aye. 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 And that passes. General discussion? None. None. Public comment, nobody here, no. and I don't see anybody in Zoom land. None. Remarks by Alderman? Could I offer up one thing for sure. you? Sure. We will be seeing you again really soon. Okay. <laughs> uh, we gave you our third quarter uh, internal financials. I saw that. Yeah. Tomorrow being delivered to you is our year-end unaudited financials, as well as our year-end audited financial statements as well as our proxy card and our proxy statement for the annual meeting the first weekend in May. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Leonard to talk a little bit further about that. Yeah, and, and I think um, you're aware of our process, but in case someone in for the public might not yeah. be. Yeah. So each year we have an annual meeting of both the shareholders and then followed by the director annual meeting. And the primary purpose of those is to uh, elect directors and then name officers for the coming year and Nashua as the sole shareholder is the one vote so what we will present to you over the next week or so is 
the slate of officers, I'm sorry, slate of directors that has been selected by the nominating and, uh, uh, committee. And that committee goes through a, a regular process. This year it's a little bit unusual because we've asked, asked for two additional uh, directors. We went through a process to name those uh, and then we interviewed them a couple of times I, and I know yeah, uh, I attended his. Chair, Chairwoman Klee, you were uh, present for both of them, I believe. But in any event, uh, yeah. we're very excited about the nominations um, and look forward to all of that. But the reason with that we're uh, asking for two additional is we're, we're in a transition here. We're, um, so the, believe it or not, it's been 11 years? Um, I think this well, is the 11th. We're, we're going uh, into our 11th year, absolutely, yeah. Wow. yes. Yeah, so we're settling down, but at the same time, there are going to be some changes both on the, at the board and in the, uh, in the company itself. Um, and we thought it important to have a little bit of overlap uh, for that transition period. So the goal is that we're going to have a full board for the first time, really, uh, uh, hopefully, and uh, go forward from there and see if we can... Uh, give people a little, get, let them get their feet under them for a year or so. Um, so what you're going to see is uh, yeah. we have five nominees, right? Yeah. Yes. We, normally we would have three. This year we have an extra two. And what we have done is identified which uh, group they go in. So we have directors that are A, B, and C um, so that they everything is staggered. So you'll right. see you'll see in the summary uh, that there, the two new uh, individuals will be put in a particular place uh, in order that they be staggered appropriately so that we have the same number of or approximately the same number of directors coming up each year uh, and then you of course will see uh, that the proxy itself calls for this committee to kind of okay the the slate and then uh, you name somebody to vote your proc vote your shares basically mm -hmm. it, it has been anywhere you know it's been the mayor, mayor has been signing it the mayor yeah. has been signing it the mayor used to come uh, but it, I don't I don't know that he has come to the meeting recently right. and you can certainly name uh, uh, Larry or, or Don is what it's been right. historically right. so that's kind of the process the other thing you'll see is the annual report which uh, is you know it's a it's actually a pretty well, actually, I want to say it's it's a very detailed, thoughtful report. Yes. Uh, it starts to look similar to last year, but as you go through the details, it does provide you good details um, on what has happened this past year, and uh, and then of course we get we send you the financial reports too. Is that coming at the same time? So the the annual report to shareholder will come with the proxy and the proxy card in a separate letter in conveyance will be our audited financial statements. Uh, unfortunately, FASB, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, has changed some standards that if we put those in together with the same letter, our auditors would have had to audit the annual report as well. And I said, instead of spending extra time and money doing that, we can do two letters. <laughs> so you're going to get two letters with two separate packages on the same day. It's actually probably <laughs> easier for you, too, just to separate them in any way. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. especially for the, the newer, the newer um, yeah. members here. Um, just one quick question with the... Um, your growth because of the St. Gobain um, mm -hmm. situation and so on, mm -hmm. that has actually kind of changed your complexion or is it just kind marginally, of marginally? Marginally. When I, when I look at the build out, you know, in Penichuck East Utility, that's where we gained a number of customers over in Litchfield. Um, and I'm going to say that our, our customer growth grew from about 8,200 customers to about 8,600 customers. Mm -hmm. And then in Amherst and in Bedford is where we added some customers because of P PFAS, right. okay? And that's in Penichuck Waterworks where we probably went from, you know, we probably added, oh boy, what was it? It was probably about 300 customers maybe on a customer base of 25,000 customers. Right. So it's not much more than organic growth, okay. um, you know, but, you know, the, the thing is, is there was actually a lot of pipeline and infrastructure, you know, St. Cobain paid almost $14 million for the build out of the system over in Litchfield, of which part of that was transferred to us as assets for us. Part of that's owned now by the state of the town in the form of Route 3A and other streets and everything like this. And part of that's owned by the homeowners based on the service lines and everything that's on their property, the restoration there. And then similar type of expenditures happened in Bedford with them and then Textiles Coated International in Amherst. And so, you know, and it's that trifecta too, where we're a beneficiary and owner, 
the, the homeowners or businesses are owners and the state and or the town winds up becoming an owner of certain parts of that build out. And why is that important? We only need to be taxed on one third of that, okay? Because our ratepayers pay for that, that throughput of those taxes. You know, the homeowners, the fact that they get that, that doesn't really change the value of their home, and it certainly doesn't for the state or the town based on the restoration of the paving that happens within their borders. Okay. So did you take on any from Merrimack or just those other ones? Merrimack, no. I mean, because Merrimack's got their own village district. But okay. we yeah. are under, a, it's a good question. I'd love yeah. to, yeah. We want to be transparent and communicate. No, no, here, and I so. appreciate that, yes. Merrimack has six functioning wells right now. Wells four, five, seven, eight, and two and three. Wells four and five, San Cobain paid for treatment to go online. That went online about a year ago. Wells seven and eight had treatment going online. It was supposed to go online last September, but because of supply chain problems, stuff couldn't come in. And then, believe it or not, one of the carbon vessels that was being uh, transported on a truck from the Midwest to here hit a bridge. <laughs> so they had to take it back and remanufacture that, okay? So those two wells are not going online until probably sometime next month. Okay. And wells two and three, well two is going to get treatment, well three has got some other problems, so they're shuttering that and drilling well nine. So two and nine will now have treatment put on by the fall. Okay. Because of that and because of the constituencies, we actually went to the PUC in collaboration with MVD, got an emergency rate approved and an emergency special contract approved such that we could sell water through them while this, this is all happening, okay. especially because some of our community water systems are connected to the tail end of them where we actually purchase water from them. Mm. And so there's a, a indirect benefit to us and a direct benefit to Merrimack while this is being completed and that special contract will seed at the end of October of this year and, and, then, and go forward. Okay, thank you very much. I really appreciate that information. Yeah. So if I could just kind of sure. add one thing, uh, because I think it will help people in the public. We, we this don't is um, Jay Leonard speaking. Yeah, right. <laughs> just, it helps the transcriptors when they have to put the name. Sure, I apologize. We don't, we don't um, extend our system. We don't speculate on where growth might occur. So we don't, we don't spend money on new pipe. Um, to connect potential uh, no. customers. That's, we don't do that. Good. And, and that, that has always been true, but it continues to be true. I appreciate that. Alderman Dad? Yeah, with the supply chain issue that we're having, are you having any problem keeping ahead of the uh, paving program here in Nashville? Not currently, because that doesn't involve necessarily the kinds of things that we're seeing delays in. Okay, so when we're working with you in the paving program, is really our guys going out there you know, taking and exercising the valves, replacing valves that may be malfunctioning, raising the gate boxes as your paving is happening. So it's not like, you know, we're, we're, we're replacing water mains necessarily. In some of the streets where we've had to replace, it, now let's talk about your sewer projects. Your sewer projects go along with water mains, but your paving projects do not. So we've had to have very close collaboration with your public works department relative to where your sewer projects are going because when the sewers were first put into the soil a hundred years ago or 150 years ago they dug one trench they put your sewer pipe in they overfilled that then they put water mains in and they overfilled it in one trench so as you now go to replace your sewer mains you're undercutting our water mains and that's problematic and so at the time that you're doing sewer main sewer main replacement we are replacing water mains and relocating them, not above the sewer mains, but adjacent to, so you never have that problem in the future. I will tell you that current supply chain issues are show, showing elongated periods of time to actually get the pipe necessary to complete some of our water main projects. And we've been working diligently on that. But right now, we don't see any impediments, especially with the paving program, but also with the sewer program as it stands right now. Another thing, the, it looks like you're wrapping up the new tank at Kessler Farm. It's been online and functioning since the right. end of the year, yes. And I thought I saw something come out from the condo association saying that there was going to be, a, you were going to be painting the tank. It's a skim coat, a colorization skim coat on the outside of that tank. And we worked with the residents of that community to select the color. <laughs> so, yeah, well, uh, I as I understand it, it is a tan color tank. Um, 
and it's going to be skim coated and colorized here as soon as the weather turns wet, warm enough that that is able to be accomplished and all of the finished landscaping and restoration of the land around it will be completed. That should be done within the next couple of months. Again, as the weather warms up, that's one of the things that's gonna be tackled. Sure, thanks. Alderman O'Brien. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Guzzi, you for uh, mentioning the sewer and water lines and everything else. And uh, this is mostly just for the public benefit uh, through the Public Works Committee. And I think it's coming, or did it already come to us in budget, but basically, around six million dollars but like you mentioned how one pipe is on top of another pipe uh the city has done something very smart and that is relining the uh, sewer lines so that gets us away from the cost factor yes it is expensive but it's a prudent and practical way right. to increase the longevity of this uh infrastructure therefore that we're not going to get into like the right. foreseeable mix that you say so it's uh in the long term money well spent so thank you and that also this is mr goody that also gives us the flexibility to then deploy our assets in infrastructure replacement perhaps targeted differently as far as timing so we might have a water main that's right on top of your sewer main that if we don't have to do that right now it's probably still good for another 30 or 40 years mm -hmm. and we may have another project that really needs to be done now and it allows us to then pivot i guess you might say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just adding on to the as, as being the, the queen of the, uh, the, the dirty water calls. <laughs> um, when you do something like that, that is going to um, do as I would often refer to as a call for, call for water because you're gonna have to change it and move things around. Um, would residents then expect to see some of that manganese kind of um, come through, much like as if there were a fire or something, Our goal just so that they know that water could happen like this. So. Well, one of the things we do is we promptly notify to the extent we possibly can everybody. I will tell you, and this is a public plea to our customers, the more contact information we have about you, the better we can notify you. We have a number of people who don't want to give us certain contact information. I understand, we get all get bombarded. But to the extent we have more contact information, the better we can communicate with you. We've got multiple ways we do that. We send out mailings, we put things on our website, we have a social media presence. But if we've got the kind of contact where we can actually put out a distribution directly in a text or a call or something like this, we can be more proactive in not only indicating to our customers what's going on, but being able to communicate the progress of what's going on. And that's really important when we're doing flushing activities and things like this, mm -hmm. because colored water, we don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. it, and it does happen when you disturb an infrastructure. And so what we've got to do is deploy the right practices with our people such that they can clear the system in their home. And if they can't do it on their own, that we can get in there and help them mm -hmm. so we can bring clear water back. The water that leaves our plant is pristine, mm -hmm. okay? Yep. And we want it to remain that way all the way to the faucet. And, and I appreciate that. And for those that are listening, you all have been incredible. I know that when my constituents have called you, if they've had problem after problem, you've gone in, you've done flush, you did it in my home. And I know you've done in others in Ward, right. Ward 3, and I appreciate that. And there are times um, that, yes, the water is not quite as pristine, and then suddenly the next day it's as clear as, exactly. yeah, I mean, as a babbling brook. It's just, it's unbelievably beautiful. So I, I do know that these things do happen. I know you're doing all the best things. Right. I know the water has, it's tested, as you said, it leaves very, very pristine. And sometimes it's just the older pipes and the manganese and calls for water when we have fires and so on, right. some issues that have happened on Concord Street and thanks to Fireman yeah. O'Brien over here <laughs> doing that, or even when you're doing flushing, right. I know it can happen. Um, and I remind people to do the flusher with cold water, all your faucets, yep. if you see it, don't flush your toilet because you're gonna end up with it in your tank, don't run the hot water because you'll have it in the hot water tank. Right. I go through all of these and then I tell them the number one thing, call Penachuk. Exactly. Even if you've cleared it up, call them, report it, let them know that it's happened, even if you don't need service. And that's the biggest thing you've taught me very well is that you can't fix something you don't know about. And you know, I appreciate that. If somebody's got color water in their home, we don't know that, right. okay? So please tell us, we want to work with you. We want to make the situation right. Yeah. So. And I appreciate that you've even made it easier for renters 
to call in, right. um, which at one point didn't. You, you've really, you, you've bent over backwards to try to make this as easy as the system as possible, so I appreciate that. Great. So Are there the, any others? The, uh, Alderman Dowd. The other thing is that you recall we, we repaved Tinker Road, mm -hmm. and we didn't repave a section because that's where you put your new pipe in, connecting uh, the tank, I guess, to the tennis truck mm -hmm. and it went across the road. Is there any more... Uh, piping or anything going on in that section of Tinker Road from the tenant truck standpoint? And I apologize, I probably can't answer that question with accuracy at this time, Mr. Dowd. Uh, what I would recommend is, is uh, you know, we may be meeting here in the next week yeah. or two, um, and that's a question that I would pose directly to our chief engineer. I don't know of anything, but I also don't want to misspeak and say, no, there's nothing going on, and he'll say, Larry, you forgot about X. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's always a way, yes. The constituents are saying, you know, when are you going to pay that last little piece yeah. of Tinker Road, you know, because it's having some issues, so. I think it's available at this time, but let's verify yeah. with him and we'll make it 100% right. certain. Right. Alderman O'Brien. Yeah, I just want to say something about the colored water. As you know, with my past experience being on the fire department, uh, it's an inconvenience that we all go through, even in my neighborhood yeah. whenever you're out and about. But the people got to realize um, there's a difference. From day-to-day -day operations, what we used to call the NOP, or normal operating uh, pressure of a particular system. That's fine and dancy dandy when you're taking your showers in the morning, flushing your toilets throughout the day, or right. running your dishwasher. But the thing is, the uh, pipes itself never really get to the increased volume or velocity that's in the internal of the pipe. So it needs to be cleaned out. There is a factor that's called tuberculation. It's basically the rust and everything inside the pipe, it deflakes. And if that gets into one of our, that we spend, uh, fire pumpers, that is about, you know, half a million dollars, you can imagine the repair costs. And it has happened, the uh, uh, centrifugal uh, pumping system on the truck, uh, the main veins are not really that wide, so it doesn't take these little stones much to, to really interfere and get into them. So it's part of the things, to me, I happen to like it as much as it's a pain in the rump. It's an indicator to me that, as past St. Patty say, <laughs> spring is here. So it's part of the, I know. it's part of the summer thing. And as a kid growing up in Boston, we used to love when the hydrants were. It was a free uh, soaking, so it was exactly. good. <laughs> and you know, the manganese buildup has, has built up over years. And he's right. You know, when you go to flush that, it's scouring the inside of these pipes. And what has happened is, is our, our treatment methodology, not only at, at Penichuk, but in the country and around the world, has improved over time. And so this is a situation that's got diminishing returns, but diminishing levels of manganese. Okay, at some point in time, we won't even have the issue of, you know, having to clear these colored water because we'll have scoured the pipes enough, but we're not there yet. Okay, we had, you know, two, three years ago, we changed over to a different treatment method. We had one flushing season where we had to do extra work because it was just intensive what we were doing. And each year we're seeing less and less that we have to expunge from the pipes. But again, we're not there yet. Okay, so. I, I, I can tell you in my neighborhood when you've, when you've done the flushing, we've, we've seen the uh, manganese. The first time I saw it, I was like, what is all this ash and, and so on? And, and then we realized that it was that the pipes have been flushed that, that evening and, yeah. and so on. Um, so it is quite interesting. The, um, just as another side, the other issue that I get um, is low water pressure mm -hmm. from some people. Some people said they've put in pumps and they still have low water pressure. Would that be something with your pipes or do you think it would be something with your pipes? Should they be contacting Penichuk? They should contact us, okay. but it can be a combination of things. Yeah. And then the other thing is, and again, I'm not the engineer, so right. I'm probably going to be wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure the standard is we have to provide between 40 and 100 pounds of pressure into a home. Right. As low as 40, but not over 100. Because if it's over 100, that's where you're blowing out the washer hoses in the house and blowing faucets thing. off the sink and all that kind of stuff. But under 40, you got to dance around in the shower to get wet. Um, you know, so, um, so what might be low water pressure might actually be well within compliance in right. what the requirements are, but is not satisfactory to somebody. What's really problematic is if somebody says, look, my water pressure used to be X, and now it's X minus 10. Right. That tells me that something is happening that needs to be rectified. Um, and they should contact us. Now, it may be our problem, 
but it may unfortunately be their problem in the service line. And that's where, you know, the service line is owned by the homeowner mm -hmm. um, where they would be responsible. Okay. But here's my public service announcement. We also have a, a program called Water Type, which is an insurance program yep. that you can buy and you pay a monthly fee. And what that does, it covers the cost of that we ownership have. slice <laughs> that you have. Yeah, we I, I ha we have that in, in our home. Yes, yes. I, I believe in insurance because if you don't have it, that's when you truly did need it. Right. Um, you know, the, the the on the the water pressure, it's not just one house; it's neighborhoods that are that are contacting me on it, and it's not just necessarily that there's not enough water. They're saying when they flush the toilet, the the water pressure drops, or if they run a faucet and they're taking a shower, water pressure drops. That Definitely, they should be contacted. Okay, us. I will make sure that they, they get yep. through to you. Thank you. And you think all of Brian has a motion? Okay. <laughs> ah, yes, I do. I would like to make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we'll end at um, 737. Thank you very much.